And Mickey, what you may not understand is it's precisely that attitude towards younger men yep. that is driving them to Donald Trump. And I think the election in the end will not be won with women. It will be won with men. And interestingly, increasing numbers of black American men and Latino uh, American men. So, Tim Can Paul, I just challenge that for a second? You can challenge it, Men yeah. don't turn out at the same rates as women. It's, it's really... Miki Konst was a guest on Piers Morgan Uncensored, where she faced off against a panel that included Vinnie Vincent Osana from The Patrick Bet David Show, Wahad Ali, and right-wing podcaster Tim Poole. In this segment, Miki Konst gets into a heated debate with Tim Poole about Kamala Harris running ads aimed specifically at young men. Things definitely get intense, but it's also pretty entertaining. I'll show you the key moments from the debate and share my thoughts along the way. Let's dive in and check it out together. Women have a higher rate of turnout, they're more reliable voters, and young women are more left than they've ever been because of a lot of the online hate that they're seeing. So while Tim Pool might not like this, the majority of men actually do respect women and do like to talk to them. And I think, you know, there is there misogyny? Sure. Why and would Tim Pool why would Tim Pool not like people board. to respect women? What's he said that uh, makes well, you think that? What did I, I mean, say to this I, lady? I watched his commentary in response to the Kamala. This lady, I have a name, Tim, I've called you your name. You can call me my name. My name is Nomiki Konst. I'm well known. I'm on the internet. You've commented about me before as this lady. So, Tim, you know, I saw your commentary about uh, the manliness ad, and you said that that wasn't manly. That I, I don't think that men Which should one? be looking to other men to see what's manly. I mean, most heterosexual men want to persuade women because it's part of their, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's how they live, right? Tim Poole, I'm just questioning... Why you're defining masculinity? All right, let, and let's him. Okay, because we're the ones. Well, well, it's interesting that you think you should be able to define masculinity, but he can't. Tim Pool, your response. Right off the bat, Tim Pool tries to act like he's not a misogynist, but he starts by referring to the guest as this lady. If you're trying to prove you're not misogynistic, it's not a great move to act like you don't know the name of a female commentator who's right there with you on the show. This isn't just a one-off with Tim Pool either. Other right-wing pundits on Piers Morgan Uncensored have done the same thing. Recently, someone pulled this with Francesca Fiorentini, pretending they didn't know her name, and she responded by clearly stating her name and her show. Not the best start for Tim Pool here. I'm, I, I don't know why this lady keeps saying my name. I didn't say anything to her. I think I started this off saying I agree with the left position that there is an inherent sexism problem in this country. That uh, actually, I'm hearing this from some of, some of the reporters that we have on the street, that there are young men when asked why they wouldn't support Kamala Harris. They give no reason other than she's just a woman. So I certainly understand why the Harris campaign, Tim Waltz and Harris and, and their uh, supporters are making videos trying to tell men, you know, here, here's here's how you can be masculine. So th in particular, there's a couple ads. There's the white dude for Harris ad. And then there was another one that was put out. I believe it was by supporters, not the campaign officially and a Tim Waltz ad that were similar. And they're, they're doing these things where they say, like, you know, I, I can fix a carburetor and I'm not scared of women. These things don't say anything to men. Now, I, I, we believe, I, I should say the commentary we had on this is that they were female coded advertisements likely written by women for men. I think if you look at uh, the trends that guys follow in terms of media, they're looking at action movies. It's, it's rather stereotypical, but there is a lowest common denominator here. So I, I don't think you are convincing men to vote for women by making commercials where you say, here's how men should act. I, I, I don't think you need those arguments for men. I think uh, if, if there's a struggle with men, I wonder if the issue is not that it's a point of uh, convincing these men, but that you actually just have guys who are sexist. And how you overcome that's a challenge I don't quite, I, I don't quite know. Uh, but I think when we criticize and mock, say, a cringe commercial, it's because it's certainly not the way to do it. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, that well, it depends on who you're trying to target. I mean, if you're trying to target Tim Pool viewers, yeah, probably not. I mean, the far right, I don't think Kamala Harris or any keep, Democrat was ever going to win over. Hold on, hold on, but there are plenty of men who may need permission. I mean, what, do you, what, do you, what do you mean a Tim Pool viewer? A typical Tim Pool viewer is probably not going to be pro Kamala Harris unless they're hate watching. On Tim Pool's show and others like it, they're constantly criticizing Kamala Harris, Joe Biden and Democrats, saying how bad they are for the country while supporting Donald Trump for reelection. So it's unlikely that viewers of Tim Pool's show are being swayed to support Harris. Sure, there could be other reasons a young man might watch Tim Pool beyond election commentary. 
But since right-wing politics is the main focus, it's hard to imagine them suddenly backing Kamala Harris after watching his content. I mean, you, mean, you have you mean an like audience, who agrees, and the audience an inherent, is far right, and, and the od- over somebody who thinks 90% male. Sexism. So you're saying that you think my audience that agrees with me that there's inherent sexism in this country and racism, and that that creates a barrier for Kamala Harris, those are the viewers you're talking about? No, I'm saying that the folks who listen to your show are not, they are not the target audience of these ads. There are plenty of men out there who may not have really understood when they kept asking, asking things like, where is Kamala Harris's plan, even though she said it over and over and over again on the campaign trail. They're using excuses yeah, and not make understanding you, hang that on, the hang underlying on, issue you, you, Hang on, hang on. Kamala Harris was the best one in the world. She doesn't have a big plan what she's going to do. She never thought she'd have to have one. She gets parachuted in in this weird coronation, a completely undemocratic process, by the way, which I don't think served her or the Democrats very well, and I suspect will come back and haunt them uh, at the election. Um, But the truth is that Kamala Harris doesn't seem to have a proper plan. Her plan is to hammer Trump, and that's fine. But I don't think that, unlike in 2020, when Biden hid in the basement and did that quite successfully, I don't think just being anti-Trump is enough. Americans are looking for a much bigger picture. This is something Piers Morgan does regularly on his show. He often criticizes Kamala Harris, Joe Biden, and Democrats while defending Donald Trump. Senk Uyghur has called him out for being a Trump supporter, though Piers consistently denies it. However, it's clear from his frequent criticism of Democratic leaders and his defense of Trump that many believe his stances align more with conservative viewpoints, even if he doesn't openly embrace that label. Recently, Piers mentioned the idea of rising support for Trump among black voters. But according to the Pew Research Center, 77% of black voters support Kamala Harris, including 73% of black men and 79% of black women. While there may have been a small uptick in Trump's support from black voters, it's likely only around 1 to 2%, making Morgan's claim seem somewhat exaggerated. Now, looking at Namiki Konst's debate with Tim Poole, Kant's defended the Harris campaign's move to target young men with their ads, though it's clear that Poole's audience, which leans far right, probably won't be convinced. Still, the strategy could be effective for reaching young men who aren't as entrenched in right-wing politics. Namiki Konst also pointed out that young women could play a key role in this election, especially given Trump's stance on issues like Roe v. Wade, and comments from figures like J.D. Vance about women. It raises the question of how young women in particular might turn out to vote. What do you think about the Harris campaign's strategy and the points Namiki Konst raised in her debate with Tim Pool? Do you think young men and women will be pivotal in this election? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Your support helps me grow the channel and bring you more content like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.